Hi, um, I'm Paul Lawrence. I also work in the Android systems team. And this is Daniel Rosenberg. He works with me. Um, we're working on something called Fuse BPF. Um, that's who we are. Um, Android has tried to use Fuse. There's some very natural use cases for Fuse in Android. Um, uh, one of the first was SD card FS, well, SD card before FS. Um, uh, the incremental file system that um, Matthias was staring at me while he talked about earlier um, was first implemented in Fuse. Um, um, we've got a couple of use cases in storage. Um, uh, location redaction is um, one that we're currently shipping where we remove the location from images for, for applications that don't have location permission. Um, and then one we're working on right now is folder hiding where um, in certain areas, if you, if you can see certain folders, you can build up a fingerprint of the device, which is a, a, a privacy violation at some level. And we, we want to basically hide folders that the application should be able to see by Linux rules. We don't want it to see. Essentially, we want, the, we want to change the file system in ways that are not, not that Linux-y, um, but that are needed for compatibility reasons or, or, or whatever. Um, but the, the problem is that we have an expectation from our OEMs and actually from ourselves that we really never degrade performance. If, if, we, if we knock 10, 20% off performance, it's a very hard sell. In fact, um, those people from, I think I know there's people from Qualcomm here, you'll, you'll, you'll tell us what, what, we, what you say to us when we remove 10% of performance, just to stop doing it basically. Um, and so we have this zero. So even though Fuse is pretty good in many ways and it's been quite highly optimized, it doesn't give us the performance we need when we try to use it in these ways. Um, but this, this is how we're using, we're only using Fuse currently for one of these purposes, which is location reduction, because um, that was a sufficiently serious security problem that we felt we had to take the performance hit. Um, it's just a generic use of how, how Fuse works on um, with, 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 two, with two, two transitions into user space. Um, that use cases. Uh, um, oh, um, we had two things that uh, two, two things that came up that gave us some ideas as to how we could actually use. We still want to use views. We want to know how and. One of the first ones was pass through, which, which is the idea that you can pass through all reads and writes to a file. When you decide this file is just this file, this, this fuse file should actually just be this underlying file. So we simply hook the, the read editor and write editor and, and the mapping, uh, memory mapping, and we pass them straight through. Um, and this solved read and write performance, as, as you'd expect, completely for those files. Um, um, it doesn't do anything for directory operations. Um, um, but the reason why it's then native performance. And then the other thing that we heard about was XFuse, which was a, um, three years ago at Plum as it was presented. Um, it was an attempt to use BPF in Fuse to optimize, it was primarily used for optimizing attribute caching and things like that. Um, it was a very interesting idea, but it didn't seem to go far enough. Um, and then we also had requests, or the people that did part fuse pass through had requests to do directory pass through. Now I always felt that directory pass through means just essentially a spine mount at that point. So, and you can't do anything. There's no control at all. You just, this directory is now this under directory. It's almost, it's, it is a spine mount at that point to any, to any extent. Um, but it's, it's useful in a small number of cases, but it's not that useful in many cases. It's just not quite flexible enough. Um, but we felt that putting this together, putting the Fuse BPF, the X Fuse with the BPF with the pass through would give us something that actually would solve these problems. Um, so we, Daniel and myself came up with the design. Um, it's a, it's a stacking file system. Um, um, it allows any, so if there is a backing file system, um, I'll come to, I'll come to how that is set a bit later. Um, any request to the file system comes in. Um, can be handled in that, that request can be handled either by Fuse or by the backing file system. Um, and, and the BPF um, 
can free up post filter these requests as, as needed. So that's that's where the flexibility comes from. Using BPF to look at the request as it comes in, you can block the request, you can change the request, um, you can pass it down to the underlying to, to the to the fuse daemon for for further filtering and user space if, if BPF doesn't give you sufficient um, the context or whatever to make the decisions it has to make. Um, and, then, and then it can be passed to the backing file system. Um, and the, the, the implementation is, is really that we um, we added a backing inode and a, and a BPF program to each of them. Point us to a potential backing inode and a, a potential BPF program to each fuse inode structure. Um, it can be set at mount time, um, or they can be set at lookup time. Um, so when you, when you do a fuse lookup, I'll, I'll, I'll more on that later. Um, we created a structure called fuse BPF args, which um, to do. Um, if the backing inode exists, then any request to, to the, the any, if the backing inode exists in a fuse inode, any request to that file or directory um, will be conditionally sent to the backing inode. Um, if there's not one, then we're just going to behave like we're in classic fuse mode. Um, if no BPF, we just send it straight to the backing inode, and that's really the pass through. That would be equivalent to the directory pass through we talked about. Um, if there is a BPF, then we create a we format the fuse BPF args. Um, no, and then we send that to the BPF so that the BPF can um, analyze the analyze the arguments and, and work out what to do. Um, we can then optionally send it to a user mode filter, and, um, and it can modify the request and then send it. Rather, I should say, um, um, and, and that request is then called out to the backing file system, and then we get back the, the, the fuse out args. Um, and we can send and we can send those to the post filter, um, and then they can get the BPF post filter, which can then conditionally send it to the BPF to the sorry the fuse daemon again. Um, I'll go through that in a couple of use cases to sort of see how that works. Um, so this this is the, the hiding the directories um, example like I was talking about earlier. Um, so we have to hook a lookup and a reader. You don't need to do anything. The pre-filter. Once once the lookups happened, we can then analyze the the, the, the return from the lookup in um, in the post-filter and simply change. If the if the application can see the directory but should not be able to, simply change eperm to eno n as the return value, and then and now another lookup will no longer see the directory. It'll no longer even think it's there. Um, and then if we post-filter the reader. Um, and simply walk through it and remove the entries that we don't think we, we, that should not be there. Um, now that has to happen in user space because so at this point in time, BPF, I understand it, could not do something that complicated. Um, and then we can remove BPF from any any child folders at that point. Um, this, this only happens on one layer. This is there's one layer where we need to hide one folder where we need to hide these folders. Below that, we just want everything to be native performance. So. Um, and the redaction use case, which was, um, is under development, um, app has the media file permission, but does not have location. It can every time you take a photograph, it can basically get your location, which is kind of a, a problem. Um, so um, we're, going to, we're going to remove, we're going to replace with zeros the um, the location in the photograph. Those apps which have that combination of media permission but not location permission. Um, so we simply need to hook the opens and store the um, the upper limit, the, the high watermark of where that information could be. And then we just need to hook reads, um, and, and reads below that point will get sent. To, well, well, will get post sent to user space. The user space can zero out the areas that should not be visible. So compared with a normal fuse implementation, these are these are really simple um, solutions. It's one of the great things in implementing this. The amount of BPF you have to write is actually really small, which which is um, very handy. Um, so, and and the, the current solution to um to, to the redaction, if a file is being redacted, all reads and writes get sent to user space with obvious performance problems. They're detectable. Um, 
I just wanted to show what we did with lookups. Um, diffuse lookup, we added an extra return structure, um, extra optional return structure. Um, if it's there, it allows it allows you to keep removal of a place. I think we're going to change those names. Yeah, yeah. probably. Um, essentially, you can keep it removal of a place, the backing inodes, the band and the backing BPF. So you can point it to a different file. Or you can point it at, um, and you can change the BPF, or you can actually, or you can remove it. Um, I've only got five minutes, so I'm going to quickly rush through it. Um, one really cool thing is that actually this, this also works on negative entries, which have been sort of going around the houses on, but it seems to give a really elegant solution to doing this on files as they're created, or as files are moved, or as links, or links are created. Um, Daniel for a discussion of the verifier. Yep. So on the uh, the verifier side, we're we've been uh, we're kind of mirroring the fuse communication with the fuse daemon with the fuse arg. So we have a fuse BPF arg, and that consists of a couple of uh, you know blocks of memory of known size. And looking through the verifier, it seemed that packets were the closest fit for that. So, you know, kind of doing it more in the um, the old BPF style. So there may be some adjustments to be done there. Yeah, we, we only learned this yesterday about the old and new BPF. Thanks. Yeah, so, oh, uh, question. We have questions. Are you, have you said what you want to say? Oh, we'll see what the uh, question is uh, first. Is this on? I don't think, I don't Okay, uh, so yeah, so you, it might be tough to get a helper function, but if you guys have heard of kfunks, mm -hmm. kfunks are a way of adding all out to the kernel from BPF that are kind of more for targeted use cases. All right, yeah, that's so, probably what we uh, we should have been using. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so just FYI, like, I don't know if you'd have to have any ver verifier changes, but mm -hmm. kfunks that can like, verifier will we'll try. Yeah, so like uh, the way we, we currently have it set up, we have uh, kind of packets handling the uh, the verification for the like edges of the buffers there. And when we want to have uh, write access uh, for some of these structures for, you know, when we're dealing with strings that we're passing, we, um, you know, naturally can't override them and we might need to have uh, more space. So the helper function, basically acts as um, the BPF requesting the ability to write into these, these uh, buffers. And it converts them into allocated memory, which is either actually allocated or not. So the, a, a use case, for example, is if you want to look up a particular file, or if, if the request comes in to look up a file called file, you might just want to look up a file with a slightly longer name. Um, we need to allocate something to put the longer name in to send that to the actual backing thing. That's what that's what the function was being used for. So we need to find a way to do that in the in the new world. Yeah, and I saw, I saw in some of the BPF presentations that there is, I guess, more of a sense of allocation now than when I was originally writing this on like a kernel version from I don't know several years ago. Yeah, SQL. Uh, can you decide which file to map the operations to on a range by range basis? Like if you're writing to this part of the file, go to turn it into a write to this backing store, otherwise to that one? We so I have a, so no. And I'm, I'm very aware of the desire to do that. Okay. Yeah, that, so so if we really want to get to the version do. one up, sent, uh, sent up fine, for perfectly discussion. Fine. But I, I sort of, I'm, I'm in the back of my mind, there are use cases where you want to have multiple trees. Sure. And you want to have one minute left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I can, I can really see the advantage of that. I, I want to chase that idea down, but I'm not quite sure what, how yet. See you then. Hi, can I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes, um, of course. Hi, Paul. Uh, one, 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 one quick question: If you, if you can say whenever you will have code to show uh, on the state of the project, uh, 
at what stage it is right now. And the other question so, is, I was wondering about uh, duplicating a lot of code for stacked file system and whether you consider that uh, uh, you saw a lot of duplication from overlay FS, maybe something that could be uh, factored out. So a bunch of time. First, to answer your first question, we're planning to send the patches up next week. Yeah. Okay. Um, and to answer your second question, I haven't considered it, and you're not the first person to bring it up. Yeah, but it does sound like a good idea. But we want to get the patches up first, worry about the duplication of code second, or even third or fourth. Anyway. OK, um, and is this now production or going into production soon? What's the status? We're going to use this in the next version of Android. That's, that is our plan. It's solving some key problems. Cool. Thank you. Thanks.